Welcome back to our lecture series, Math 4230, Abstract Algebra 2 for students at Southern Utah University. As usual, I'll be your professor today, Dr. Andrew Misseldine. Lecture 10 is the second part of a two-part lecture, which we started obviously in number nine, for which we're trying to study uh, non-abelian simple groups. We made the observation that A5 is a non-abelian simple group of order 60, and I made the claim that you can't get any other non-abelian simple groups of a smaller order than A5. It's the smallest non-abelian simple group. And so we were considering all numbers from 1 to 60 in, in the last part of lecture 9. We ruled out everything except for the following on our list. 12, 18, 20, 24, 28, 30, 36, 40, 42, 44, 45, 48, 50, 52, 54, 56. And then 60, of course, is going to work. And so what we want to do in this in lecture 10, in multiple videos in lecture 10, is I want to rule out some of these remaining possibilities. So what we're going to do right now is consider the number 28, okay? The factorization of the number plays a critical role here. 28 is 2 squared times 7. It's 4 times 7 here. So by the Seeloff theorems here, if N7 is the number of Seeloff uh, seven subgroups that G has if it's a group of order 28. Then by the third theorem, this has to be a number that divides four, but also it has to divide four, but it also has to be one mod seven, which in this situation, you'll notice that four is smaller than seven, okay? Um, and so... The divisors of 4 are going to be 1, 2, and 4, right? 1 is 1 mod 7. 2 is not because it's too small, right? It's less than 7. 4 is also not the, going to work either. So what you see in the case of 27 um, is because 4 is so small, it doesn't have any divisors that are larger than 7. So in terms of reduction modulo 7, the only one who could do it is 1. Um, and as such, every group of order 28 is going to have to have a unique Seeloff 7 subgroup. Um, again, because the other factor is too small, that it's that unique Seeloff 7 subgroup is going to have to be normal. Um, and so this is not a simple group. So 28 is removed from our list. Um, it is also true that we can remove 20 for the same reasoning here, right? Um, if you have, if you consider a Seeloff 5 subgroup, your options are 1, 2, and 5, excuse me, 1, 2, and 4, but the only one that's congruent to 1 mod 5 would be 1. So groups of order 20 have a unique C-lock 5 subgroup. And by similar reasoning, we get that 44, which is 4 times 11. Because 4 is too small, um, we get that there's going to only be one 11 subgroup of 44. So that c -lock subgroup necessarily has to be normal. So we can remove... Uh, 20 from our list, and we can remove 44 from our list as well. Um, I also want to point your attention to, actually, I think there's one more that's missing here. Aha, 52. You're on my list as well. I could see you hiding there. 52 is 4 times 13. 13 is way bigger than 4. If, we, if 13, excuse me, if we need a number that's a divisor of 4, 1, 2, and 4 again, that's congruent to 1 mod 13. Since, since this number is smaller than the other prime, um, we get that you can't have it. There's nothing else you could do here. So we can also remove 52 from our list here. So I'm going to leave it as an exercise to the viewer to prove the following statement right here, theorem. So imagine that N is a number that factors as P to the, uh, P to the, what am I going to call it? I already use an N here. So we'll use a P to the M times a number K, um, such that, so P is prime. And we have that k is actually smaller than k is smaller than the prime itself. Okay, so in that situation, I want I would then leave it to the viewer to prove, kind of mimicking what we're doing right here, prove that all groups, all groups of order n, all groups of order n are in fact uh, not simple. And so I want you to be aware that this is the situation we're in so far. Like if you look at 28, this is our number K, 
This is our number P to the M. It's actually just P to the first, right? Seven is so much bigger than the rest of it, K, that there's just no other possibility. Same thing, five is bigger than four, 11 is bigger than four, 13 is bigger than four, okay? Now in this situation, and that's how we ruled out those numbers, uh, but there's also the possibility that P could be repeated prime. Like take the number 18, for example. 18 factors as two times three squared. The fact that three is bigger than everything else is gonna to lead to a very similar situation. So I'm not gonna provide the details of this theorem. This is actually a student, uh, this, is a, this is a homework exercise for my student. It's a good exercise for the viewer here. But by, by proving this exercise right here, which is a generalization of what we're talking about right now, you can rule out the numbers 18, uh, what else can we rule out? We can also rule out the number 50. 50 is two times five squared, five bigger than two. We can rule out 54, right? 54 is two times uh, three cubed. Three is bigger than two, so we can get rid of that. So another number I also wanna take off our list is 45. Now 45 factors as three squared times five. Uh, for which this theorem doesn't apply to it directly because, of course, 5 is not bigger than 9, um, nor do we have that 3 is bigger than 5. So it doesn't apply directly, but this one's going to be very similar to the examples we've done in this video right here. So I want to leave this as an exercise as well. So as we continue on our search for non-abelian simple groups, uh, we're going to take 45 off our list because, again, those are going to be left towards uh, towards the viewer right here. Now, the, the good news is we took a lot of things off our list in this video, but the bad news is we've gotten all of the easy ones now. The remaining ones, most of which are multiples of 12, will take a little bit more effort, and so we'll approach some of those in the next few videos.